Hey guys, it's Landon with Redefine Horizons, and this is a video I'm recording for one of my survey technicians, Austin. Uh, so Austin's been working on some record of survey maps for me, and what I'm going to show him in this video is how you can go into Trimble Business Center and get the information you need for a couple of the notes on our records of survey. So we have this, sometimes we'll have this note on the use of state plane coordinates. And then almost always we will have a basis of bearing statement. Okay, so we want to see how we can um, get information out of Trimble Business Center to uh, to complete these notes. So I'm going to go ahead and pull BricsCAD over to the side here. So we're going to get that information typically out of our TBC network project. It could also be our TBC working project. Uh, this is what a TBC network project looks like. So almost every project here at RH, every survey has uh, a static GNSS control no network that we uh, least squares adjust in Trimble Business Center. That's called our network project. So if you're at my shop, if you go into the job folder and then you come into the field folder, control folder, there should be a TBC network folder and then the TBC file will be in there. It's this VCE. That's what you open. That's what I have opened here and this is Trimble Business Center. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to get the information that we need. We need the combined scale factor, the elevation of the scale factor point, that's for, for converting distances from ground to grid. And then we need, uh, typically we need the, ba the uh, bearing uh, either between two cores or between uh, the, one of the core stations and a, and a, a local monument um, that, that we will use for our basis of bearing. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take care of the this information we need for the scale factor. So what you're going to do is you're going to going to you're going to come over. Um, we're going to go ahead and highlight. Um, it really doesn't matter. Um, but typically, we only highlight the control points. Um, let's see, but I I have I have some cores in here, but. I'm gonna. I need a, a point that I can use for um, for a scale factor, and it usually helps. It's got to be. It's it's good to have a point on the ground. So if there's a little bit of judgment here. You're gonna want to work with your surveyor to, to pick your point, and you you know it's good to get a point in the center of the project. Um, but I, I I need a boundary point. <clears throat> Let's see here. I think I'm gonna use. We didn't we didn't find a ton of stuff out here. Um, I think I'm going to use this, uh, is this 561? Yeah, I think I'm going to use 561. So we'll go ahead and select that point. And then we're going to come up here, we're going to hit export. And then if you're at my shop, uh, we have this export format defined. It's called RHCSF. Okay, and I've got, a, I've got another video. I'll try and remember to link, link to it in the description. Um, for this video on YouTube, but I got a video that shows you how to set up a custom export format. But let's just look at what's in here for those of you that, that don't have this. Um, so what we have in here is we have the point ID, the elevation, what they call the meridian convergence angle, that's the mapping angle, and then we have the combined scale factor. Okay, so that's how we set this export up. So once we have that chosen, we're going to go ahead and tell TBC where to put this. So we're, we always put this in the same spot. So it goes in export and it's this file right here, combined scale factor. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and save that and I'm going to replace it and we're going to hit export and we'll overwrite it. Okay. Now let's go see what that, what that file looks like. Okay, so pretty simple file, but it gives you the information that you need. Okay, so here's our scale factor, our mapping angle. Notice it's a negative. You can have negative mapping angles in California State Plane and the elevation. So we have some of the information now we need to update our sheet. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so uh, right here. So we did this map in ground, which we don't normally do. We usually do them in grid. Right here, it tells me my scale factor, 
is 493371. We only usually show it to eight places past the decimal. Okay, so we're going to just edit this, and our scale factor is 3371. So all distances are ground unless otherwise noted. Use the scale factor of to obtain ground distances. Now, usually our maps are in grid, so you have to be careful. You have to take the inverse of this. So what you do to get from grid to ground is you do 1 divided by your scale factor that comes out of TBC. And so this is actually what we would show. We would show grid distances, and we would show this as our scale factor to get from grid to ground. Okay. So if you're not sure, ask your project surveyor. Okay. But usually we are in grid, not ground. And this number needs to be 1 with four zeros and then four other numbers. Okay, so we have that part done, but uh, we need to provide a basis of bearings, okay? And so uh, the easiest way to do that is to, we should really have a control diagram, okay? And so what you do to get your control diagram is you come in and you select all your control, okay? So for, for our shop, that's going to be basically 1 to 100, and then these... Uh, cores or PBOs and you'll export those put them in a drawing draw a control diagram I have a couple other videos that show you how to, on YouTube that show you how to do a control diagram I'll try and remember to link to those in the description okay but I'm going to show you another way to do that and you can do it here with the measure distance tool in the home screen um, and so what I want to do is just pick my closest cores okay which looks like um, it's P255, but it looks like we held P306. So I'm actually going to use P306. So we're going to go from P306 to that point, 561. Now you notice when it does that, it gives you an azimuth here. Okay. And so you can convert that into a bearing, and that will be a grid bearing, right? And I'm actually going to go the other way. I'm going to go 561 to P306 because it will make it a little easier. Uh, let's see here. Let me try this again. So if I go 561 to P306. Okay, so that just makes it a little easier. I can use this northeast azimuth now with that value. So let's go ahead and uh, we're going to pop that into our node in BricsCAD. So now, now we have our, our grid basis of bearing. So it's state plane zone 3 grid bearing. And it almost always is in our projects. And we're going to say north 53, 43, 55, east. Okay, now you got to update between which two points. So that's between M561, it's a monument on our survey, and core stations P306. Okay, so this node is now done. Now, don't get confused. This basis of bearing is not the mapping angle. Those are two different things. So let's jump over to this other sheet now and see how we how we update this node. Okay, so distance is shown on this boundary or ground, not grid. Distance is a coordinate shown in the control diagram, our grid, blah, 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 epic date. Okay, combined scale factor of, okay, and here's the scale factor to convert grid to ground. So we need that inverse, right? So let's go ahead and do that. So this is going to be equals 1 over, okay, so 6628, to convert grid distances shown in the control grant diagram to ground, okay, the scale factor, now this is important, was calculated, we calculated our scale factor at M561, and by law, you have to tell people what is that elevation. That's why it's included in our export here. So our elevation is 8687. And you have to put in the app mapping angle. Mapping angle at M561. So it's already a negative here in our note. So it's negative 001748. Okay, and, and if you don't know what that means is there's a difference between the grid bearings on the map in bearings based on geodetic north of 17 minutes and 48 seconds. That's what that means. All right, so now this node is up to date. And I don't know why. There we go. 
So that is now up to date. Okay, so we have our two notes up to date. By the way, here's that control diagram. Oh, and you know what? <laughs> of course, I used M560 in the control diagram. So I should really redo these. I should redo these notes to use um, M560. Okay, so I'll, I'll do that. I won't make you guys watch that. But so that's how you pull the information you need uh, for those couple of notes on a record survey or other boundary map um, out of a TBC network project. So Austin, I hope that video helps you out.